What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to solve absolute value inequalities. I'm also gonna show you how to graph them on a number line and write them in interval notation, all right? So first of all, there's basically uh, two little rules that you have to remember. And I suggest you write these at the top of your homework or test or whatever, because it's gonna be really helpful uh, just kind of referring back to them. So first, if you have the absolute value of something and it's less than some number, we'll just call it A, then you use the word and. Okay, and in the other case, if you have the absolute value of something and it's greater than some number, you use the word or. Okay, so you're gonna see how these come into play in just a second. All right, so let's start with this first example right here. So we have the absolute value of x plus seven is less than or equal to positive two. Now, in order to solve this inequality, the first thing you have to do is basically split it up into two different inequalities, okay? So the first one is basically gonna be just how it is right here. So, but just drop the absolute value bars. So we're gonna have x plus seven is less than or equal to positive two, right? And then you're gonna draw or write in another one that's gonna be the same thing as this one. The only differences are you're gonna flip the sign and make your number right here negative, okay? So we're gonna write x plus seven, and then just flip the sign, greater than or equal to negative two. Okay, so that's all you have to do to set up your two inequalities, all right? Now remember this original problem right here, we had a less than or equal to symbol, right? So that means that's like this one right here, right? Less than, or really this could be less than or equal to. So that means we have to use the word and, okay? So you're just gonna write and between your two inequalities right here. And, all right? So we have x plus seven is less than or equal to two and x plus seven is greater than or equal to negative two, all right? So then let's just solve these individually. So first of all, we're just trying to isolate our variable x, right? So let's get rid of this seven by subtracting seven. And what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So these cancel out. So then here we just get x is less than or equal to two minus seven, which is equal to negative five. And we have our other one right here, right? So again, doing the same thing, just getting rid of the seven from both sides, right? Those cancel out. So then we're left with x is greater than or equal to negative two minus seven, which is equal to negative nine. Okay, so here's our two inequalities that we're gonna graph on our number line right here. All right, so we're gonna graph it between negative five and negative nine, right? Those are the two numbers we're working with right here. Negative five, negative nine. All right, so let's graph this one first. So this one says x is less than or equal to negative five, right? So x is smaller than or equal to negative five. All right, so we're gonna start at negative five and the smaller numbers go in this direction, right? So we're gonna shade to this direction. And we're saying that x is greater than or equal to negative nine, right? X is bigger than or equal to negative nine. Well, starting from negative nine, the bigger numbers go in this direction, okay? So to shade in this number line, you would literally just shade in the space between negative nine and negative five, all right? And do we have closed circles or open circles over here? Well, whenever you have an equal to symbol, like uh, right here, right? We have this equal to symbol here, and we also have one right here, right? Whenever you see those, that means closed circles, right? So then here, we're going to use closed circles at negative nine and negative five. Okay, now, whenever you have closed circles, you use brackets for your interval notation, all right? So we have two closed circles, so that means we're gonna use two brackets. And we're going from negative nine to negative five, right? So then we're going from negative nine to negative five. Okay, and one last thing I wanna point out is whenever we do use the word and, your graph should look something like this. It should just be a single graph like that. It should not be broken up into two different graphs because that's what an or type of graph looks like, right? Which we're gonna do in, in this next example. All right, so here we have the absolute value of C minus one is greater than five. Okay, so as you can see, we have a greater than symbol, right? our absolute value is greater than five. So that would be the same as this one right here, right? So we're gonna use or this time, okay? So again, the first thing you wanna do is split these up into two different inequalities. The first one is gonna basically look exactly like this. So we're just gonna have C minus one is greater than five. And then for the other one, you're gonna flip the inequality and your sign, okay? So this one's gonna be C minus one is less than negative five, right? Boom, all right. Now, uh, remember, we have to put the word or right here, okay? Or another thing you could do, you could also write a union symbol like that. 
uh, but in this case, we'll just keep using the word or. All right, so in order to uh, solve for C over here, we're gonna get rid of the one by adding one to both sides, right? These cancel out. So we get C is greater than five plus one is six. And then over here, same thing, add one to both sides, cancel out. So we get C is less than negative five plus one is negative four. Okay, so here our solutions are C is greater than six or C is less than negative four, all right? So then let's graph these two right here. So here's our number line, right? We're graphing at six, positive six and negative four, right? So negative four is right there, positive six is right there. Okay, so first of all, we're saying C is bigger than six. Well, here's six and the bigger numbers go in this direction towards positive infinity, right? And then here we're saying C is less than negative four. C is smaller than negative four. Well, here's negative four and the smaller numbers go in this direction towards negative infinity, okay? And there's no equal to symbol attached to these, right? So that means open circles, okay? So we have an open circle right there and right there, okay? Now, if we wanna write this in interval notation, well, we have two different graphs right here on our number line, right? So that means we're gonna have two different uh, intervals. Okay, so this first one goes from negative infinity to negative four, right? goes from negative infinity to negative four, okay? You always put parentheses around the infinities, whether it's positive or negative. So we'll put a parenthesis there. And here, since we have an open circle, we also use a parenthesis, okay? So we graph this one. Now let's do the same thing over here. Uh, so again, open circle at six means parenthesis at six, and it goes to positive infinity and parenthesis, right? And then in order to basically combine these, we have to put this big union symbol between the two. Okay, so that's what your answer would look like in interval notation. And then the last thing I wanna point out is, remember I said whenever we use the word or, you should basically have two separate uh, graphs on your number line, right? You can see that there's this big gap in between those. So that's a hint that we graph this correctly. All right, this one's kind of a trick question. So here we have the absolute value of eight X minus 12 is less than zero. Okay, now right off the bat, you could kind of look at this and say, oh, it's less than, so we're gonna use the word and, but before you get that far, one thing that you have to kind of notice is that we have the number zero right here. Okay, and this can be kind of tricky. This is kind of a problem because whenever you take the absolute value of anything, your answer should always be a positive number, right? Whether you took the absolute value of five, well, your answer would be just positive five, right? If you took the absolute value of negative five, your answer would still be positive five, right? So whenever you take the absolute value of positive or negative numbers, your answer should always come out positive, right? So a positive number can never be smaller than zero, right? It can't be less than zero. So in this case, in this problem, you would have no solutions. Okay, because it doesn't matter what we plug into here. Whatever we get over here has to be bigger than zero. Okay, it can't be smaller than zero. That doesn't work. All right, so here's the last one and it's gonna be a little tricky. So we have six times uh, the absolute value of negative F plus three plus seven is greater than seven. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is try to isolate these absolute value bars, right? So Let's get rid of this uh, positive seven out here. That's easy, right? So we'll subtract seven from both sides, right? These cancel out. So then we're left with six times negative F plus three uh, greater than uh, seven minus seven is zero. All right, so here's this zero again, right? But in this case, it's actually fine because whatever the absolute value of this is, it's gonna be bigger than zero, right? Because this is gonna be a positive number. So all positive numbers are in fact bigger than zero, okay? So in this case, it's totally legal. It's totally fine. All right, so then uh, the next thing we're gonna do here is get rid of this six. So we're gonna do that by dividing by six, right? And what we do to one side, we do to the other, right? So then the six on top and the bottom cancel out. So then we're just left with this thing right here. Negative F plus three is greater than zero divided by six, which is still just zero, right? Okay, so remember, we have to split this thing into two equations. So first of all, the first one's gonna look just like this, right? Negative F plus three is greater than zero. 
And then the other one is going to be negative f plus three. And then remember, flip the sign on the inequality and on your number over here. So this is gonna be now less than, and then zero, well, zero is really not positive or negative, so it would just stay at zero. Okay, and if you remember, the original sign up here was this greater than sign, right? So greater than means use the word or. Okay, so we're gonna use the word or right here, all right? So then we're gonna solve these individually, okay? So then here, uh, let's isolate the variable, right? Subtract three from both sides, these cancel out. So then we get negative F is greater than zero minus three, which is negative three. And then on this side, same thing, subtract three from both sides. So then these cancel out. So then we get negative F is less than, right? Zero minus three, which is negative three also. Okay, and still we're keeping this word or right here. All right, so we have two inequalities right here, right? But the first thing we have to do is get rid of this negative uh, symbol next to the F, right? That's the last thing we have to do. And the way that you do that is by dividing by negative one, right? So then here, we're going to divide negative one on both sides. So then here, the negative sign on top and this negative one on the bottom cancel out. So then we're just left with F, okay? Now remember, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you always flip the sign, okay? So in this case, we just divided by a negative number, right? We divided by negative one. So we have to flip the sign, okay? So then instead of greater than, we're gonna have less than, right? And then we have negative three divided by negative one, which is positive three, okay? Or, and then same thing here. Uh, divide both sides by negative one. Okay, so these cancel out. So we get F, and then remember, flip the sign, uh, is greater than positive three. All right, so these are the two inequalities we're gonna graph right now. So here's our number line. Uh, we're graphing at three. So here we're saying that F is less than three, right? So all the smaller numbers go in this direction towards negative infinity. And here we're saying, or we're saying, or F is greater than three. So F is bigger than positive three, right? So again, we're gonna start from three and all the bigger numbers are in this direction towards positive infinity, okay? We don't have equal to symbols attached like that, right? So that means these are open circles, right? So we're gonna have an open circle at three for both of these. Okay, so what this graph is telling us is that all real numbers are solutions except the number three, right? We basically shaded everything on the number line, everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. The only number we're excluding is this positive three right here, right? That's why we have this open circle. Now, if you wanna write this in interval notation, we can do that too, right? So uh, this first one, basically the orange one, goes from negative infinity to positive three, right? And we have a parenthesis right there, negative infinity, to positive three. And we have an open circle, right? So parenthesis also. And then we're using the word or, so we can use our union symbol. And then our other in interval right here would again be from three, but again, we're not including three. Uh, so it's a parenthesis to positive infinity. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.